Welcome everyone to Dr. q and I'm Olga Villaverde and joining me today is Dr. Lorraine Dowdy. She is an infectious disease specialist at Midway Specialty Care Center in South Miami, Florida. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. Thank you so much for having me. I want to start with this video question from Mariana. Let's take a listen. Hi, my name is Mariana and my question is, if I were to get the vaccine, what is the likelihood that I could contract the virus compared to the likelihood that I would get corona without the vaccine? That's a very good question that I hear a lot too. Thank you, Mariana. Doctor? That is a very good question and people have those concerns. Let me just say this, that coronavirus is something that no human beings had immunity to prior to the onset of this pandemic. So your chances of getting COVID-19 if you were exposed are actually very high. If you're vaccinated, the COVID vaccines that are currently on the market, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines, are approximately 95% effective. That means that if you are exposed to coronavirus, you have less than a 5%, 5% chance of actually becoming ill. And that's the main thing. These vaccines prevent you from becoming ill and they also prevent you from being seriously ill, where um, you would end up in the hospital requiring a machine to help you breathe. So. Um, the chances of getting COVID-19 without vaccination are actually very high if you've not had it already. And the chances of getting COVID uh, disease and being sick enough to be hospitalized or on a machine are actually 5% or less for, for the, the two main vaccines and also for the Johnson & Johnson, still less than about 15%. And that's why we hear a lot of people saying that if I haven't gotten it already, why should I even bother getting the vaccine right now? It doesn't mean you won't get it. No, it doesn't mean you won't get it. It means that you may not have been exposed yet. And uh, the more people that are vaccinated, the less likely you are to be, um, to, to be exposed. So certainly I, I would um, recommend that everyone consider getting the vaccine under the circumstances. Um, we, we know that there are certain risk factors for getting severe illness, um, being diabetic, having heart disease, um, kidney trouble, under treatment for cancer or chemotherapy or other things. So it's worthwhile getting the vaccine. And even if you don't have any of those health risks, it's important that you protect people around you who may be vulnerable and may have other reasons that they cannot be vaccinated. So again, it's not just for you, but it's for your community. It's for your abuelos, the abuelas, the people around you who may be sick, little kids who are not yet able to get the vaccine. Um, so so th that's another compelling reason to get vaccinated. Even if you think I'm healthy, I, I don't need to, to have it. What if someone says, well, Mariana is young, obviously she looks like she's in her teens. Why should she get vaccinated then? Is it to protect others? Is it to protect herself? Because they say the young uh, teenagers, you know, have, a, I guess, more immunity, if you will. They actually don't have more immunity. What happens is that they are less likely to become seriously ill if, they're, if they are infected. However, we do know that there are serious consequences, even for young people. Um, some people end up uh, having what they call long-haul COVID sim symptoms where uh, they become short of breath or they have other uh, kind of neurologic uh, uh, symptoms, brain fogginess that persists long after even a mild COVID uh, infection. So for people, uh, especially for young people like Mariana, I would say think about your parents, think about your grandparents, little kids around you who may not be able to get vaccinated. You're doing it for them, even if you think, oh, I'm healthy, I, my chances are winding up in the hospital are, are actually small. And I'm glad we talked about that because even my girls, uh, 17 and 19, they were uh, a bit adamant about getting it. And uh, I had to force the hand, if you will. And they weren't very happy with me, but uh, the job got done, if you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. Uh, all my children are vaccinated, including my 19 year old. So it's definitely worth it. Speaking of vaccinations, doctor, I want to show a quick video to our viewers from the CDC on why we should all get vaccinated. Take a look. I got my COVID-19 vaccination, and here's why. This isn't about gimmicks or sentiment or what commercial I like. This is about facts. COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. Millions of doses have already been given in the United States, and these vaccines have the most intensive safety monitoring in U.S. history. When you need more information, use a reliable source like the CDC website. 
And that's why we do these shows, reliable sources to get the facts out there, doctor. We're going to talk about safety in a little bit, but I want to get to a question from, La, and I'm so sorry if I say your name incorrectly, but La Rizan, I think that's how I say it. And here's the question. What about the magnet sticking to the arm of COVID vaccinated people? I think this is like a new conspiracy theory, doctor. Can we kind of uh, debunk this? Well, we can definitely debunk it. So you're, you're correct. Um, and the reason I, I understand that people are concerned about vaccination, it seems like all of this has happened in on fast forward. And, and that is true. We are in a pandemic. This is something that the world hasn't seen for about 100 years. But let me say this. Um, the average person um, has less than a tenth of an ounce of iron in their body. So the idea that they can be magnetized by something external uh, just is not uh, physiologically possible. This is not something that, that human beings can be magnetized. Even a bar of iron, it would be very difficult to magnetize. And if people could be magnetized, um, they wouldn't be able to get an MRI because an MRI it works with a giant magnet. So I, I, I'm not sure where this uh, conspiracy theory came from, but um, uh, like I said, uh, iron in the human body is a minor mineral. We do need it. We need it to make blood effectively. We need it to carry oxygen effectively. But it is not uh, in, enough or certainly um, it, it's not feasible in, in any way, realistically, that people can be magnetized, especially by a vaccine that doesn't have anything to do with magnetism whatsoever. So I, I hope that helps. And like, uh, Larissa and, uh, oh, it does. Know, As we... The vaccine. Yes, yes. As we say in Spanish, punto y aparte. In other words, let's move on from that one. Uh, doctor, I have a couple of questions. And uh, these I've heard a lot. And I, I, I always think it's important to reiterate a couple that seem to just continue. Uh, I've tested positive for COVID-19. Why should I get the vaccine? And then the second one is, are the vaccines interchangeable? So if I get the Pfizer shot the first time, can I then get the Moderna and vice versa? Can you take those two questions for me, doctor? Okay, sure. So let me take the first one. Um, uh, if I've had COVID, should I get the vaccine? Should I even bother? Well, it goes back to, I think, the first questioner, Mariana, um, asking about getting the vaccine as a young person. So we do know that many young people have my, mild illness when they contract COVID-19 virus. So they may have a, a very limited illness. They may not feel very well, just tired for a couple of days, and actually recover qu quite well. Um, the problem with that is that your body may not make a sufficient response in that setting to protect you for, from a second exposure. And, um, and even if it does, it may be that that uh, immunity, that immune response or that your, your defenses for COVID-19 are not high enough to prevent getting infected in the future. So we do recommend that people get vaccinated if they've had COVID-19, especially if they've not been sick enough to be in the hospital. And that, that time frame is about 90 days from the, from the last symptoms. So we do recommend that, that people uh, get vaccine, even if they've had COVID-19. And um, regarding the second question of whether or not you can receive one vaccine and then the other, um, there really isn't any, there, there's no data so far. Um, there's, a, there's a new trial that just started uh, in, actually in China where they're looking at two different vaccines, not the ones that are approved for use in the West or in the United States, but two vaccines um, that are being developed in China to look at sequential vaccination, meaning that you get one, one vaccine the first time around and then a different kind of vaccine the second time around. There are, um, there are some considerations that people who have had um, underlying cancer therapy or who are on uh, medications to stop transplant rejection may not mount enough of a response with either Pfizer or Moderna in the beginning, and that may be a third dose with a secondary vaccine, either uh, the Johnson Johnson or AstraZeneca, might boost more of uh, of um, uh, of, a, of a response. So I think we'll have answers to that. Probably not in the near near future, but I would believe by the end of the year we'll certainly have some. Um, data to, to give us more clarity in that in that setting. So for right now, we're recommending if you start with Pfizer, uh, get your second Pfizer shot. If you started with Moderna, get your second Moderna shot. And if you got the Johnson Johnson, well, that's the one and done.